Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second day of the 2021 thematic seminar on management challenges of internationally designated areas organized, organized by Jeju Special Self-Governing Province, the Korean National Commission for UNESCO, and the MAP National Committee of the Republic of Korea. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, I am Eun Young Kim, uh, Director of the Sciences Team at the Korean National Commission for UNESCO. And I have the honor to welcome you, uh, welcome you to this seminar. And I would like to express my sincere thanks uh, to all of you for joining us today. Uh, from all over the world. This seminar is organized by, uh, uh, as a pilot activities of the Global Research and Training Center for Internationally Designated Areas, which will be open in Jeju Island, uh, Korea. We will now begin the second day of the seminar. Today, we will have a keynote speech and three case presentations on communication strategies for internationally designated areas. In addition, we will have a panel dis uh, discussion among all speakers at the end. If you come up with any questions during the seminar, please leave a comment in either the Q&A tab or Zoom chat, and we will gladly deal with it during or at the end of the session. Now, I would like to introduce Dr. Kyungsik Woo, our keynote speaker today. Professor Woo has been working in the Department of Geology at Gangwon National University since 1986. He is chair of the group of geological heritage experts within the IUCN WCPA and has been conducting field reviews of natural world heritage sites on BF of IUCN since 2009. He also served as a president of the International Union of Spileology from 2013 to 2017. He has written numerous academic publications, including a paper on climate change that was published in Nature in 2014. Please give him a warm welcome. Professor Wu, you have the floor. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's my real pleasure to, to make this speech. I'd like to thank for inviting me for this, uh, uh, for making, uh, for my presentation uh, to Korean Commission for UNESCO. I'm sorry that we have to do this online, but you know, it might have, it would be much better if I uh, can uh, give this pre presentation uh, just in front of you. Anyway, I'd like to uh, raise an issue of uh, interactive interpretation strategy with visitors through geotourism. The contents of my presentation will be, a I, I'm going to introduce general geology and geoheritage concept and UNESCO programs and UNESCO global geoparks and geotourism, and especially uh, concentrating on interpretation patterns. If I have a little bit more time left, then I'll go on uh, to introduce the concept of visitor center. What is geology? If you are asked what geology is, you might just think that, oh, it's a dinosaur. But that's your common sense. We do have a lot of common sense regarding ecosystem, biodiversity. For example, if I ask you to tear the frog from a snake, of course, you know, you can explain blah, 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 you know, a lot of things about that. But I'm sorry to tell you that very, if I ask you the difference between granite and basalt, and if I ask you why does granite has a bright color and a coarse grains, whereas basalt has a black color and you cannot see the grains, how many people can answer to the question? I doubt that there are very, there will be very little. 
for Koreans, the Korean Peninsula is surrounded by sea, east, south, and west. And if I ask Koreans, why do we have thousands of islands in the southern and western part, uh, uh, western coast of the Korean Peninsula, whereas we have only very little islands on the east? I have that experience before, but there are very little people who can answer to the question either. Geology is dealing with the history of the earth. The history of the earth means its physical nature and historical nature. Physical nature means minerals, rocks, and plate tectonics, and uh, groundwater, and a lot of things. And historical geology meaning uh, evolution of life. There are so many geological stories hidden during the past 45 million, uh, 4.5 billion years. Also, geology may include, well, maybe uh, it, may, it may be uh, separated as a separate topic as uh, geomorphology, but geology also may include present landforms and landscape and ongoing processes. Even dealing with uh, evolution of life forms is so many, there are so many hidden stories and complicated stories within that. Since the life, we found the life forms at 3.5 billion years uh, called stromatolites. Now we have a diverse nature of uh, ecosystems and, and organisms, including a trilobite and dinosaurs, you know, in the past. There are so many stories. Are they all deserved to be pre preserved and conserved? That's something we need to think about. We cannot, because we cannot conserve all of them. Now, these days, uh, ge earth scientists, geologists are talking about these two terms, geodiversity and geoheritage. Geodiversity is, I means the presence of different geological elements, such as shallow marine sediments and sedimentary rock, sedimentary structures in the sedimentary rock, minerals, cave formations, and some microfossils and trilobites and coral reef folds, et cetera, et cetera. As you may imagine, they are not interconnected. But if you have a, there is a high geodiversity, that means we have, uh, there is a high potential education there. But high geodiversity does not necessarily mean high conservation values. What is a geoheritage? Geoheritage comprises the elements of the Earth's geodiversity that are considered to have significant value for intrinsic, scientific, educational, cultural, aesthetic, and ecological regions, and therefore deserving conservation for the benefits of future generations. Geoheritage site could be large, such as mountain ranges and huge mountains, or it can be a single line. Well, actually, in two dimensional photograph, you can see a single line here, but actually it's a plane. This is called so called Cretaceous tertiary boundary. Even though it's a small line and contains a very little amount of rocks. It does have a huge history. It includes the history of the demise of dinosaur, dinosaur extinctions by meteorite impact. Also, there is a fantastic cliff in the uh, along, along the coast coast of the Europe, and uh, we call it Creek Chalk. And in there, there are millions of beautiful microorganisms, microfossils hidden in the rocks. Also, sediments or rocks are the storage sites for climate changes in the past. In some rocks, we can 
infer, we can estimate the glacier and interglacial periods past 2 million years. So how do we protect some of the significant geoheritage geo sites? Some of them may have a national value. Some of them have a international values. There are many programs and organizations in the world for nature conservation. But I'm sorry to tell you that most programs have focused mainly for biodiversity and globally threatened and endangered species. In UNESCO, there are three programs for protected areas, world heritage, biosphere reserve, and global geoparks. But there are two programs, World Heritage and Global Geoparks, are for geoheritage conservation. What is a World Heritage? World Heritage site should display, include some size of outstanding universal value, which means the best of the best, or these days we call it representatives of the best. It should include a large enough area to show the outstanding universal value of the property. And also the state party responsible for conservation of those World Heritage Sites promised the secured management plan. But I can say that for, to become a World Heritage Site, you have to show them some features which people may say, wow, you know, at least 20 times when you look at the site. This photograph shows a one cave in Slovenia, Europe, in Europe, which has 100 meter deep ravine, deep gorge within the cave. That's something very wow. What is a global geopark? Global geopark is a program of geoheritage conservation, geoheritage conservation, but also utilization of those uh, geoheritage sites for local, sustainable local uh, development. In old days, we use history, culture, tradition, biology, geology as a separate element for tourism, but by combining all of those elements, the geopark is trying to promote geoconservation geotourism, which means educational tourism and socioeconomic development. So the essential elements of UNESCO Global Geoparks are it should have geosites of international significance, and it promotes protection of geosites, and it will promote the regional socioeconomic development, and finally, not the least, it should include the sustainable use of geosite in geopark throughout educational tourism, which I'm going to talk about today. So the geotourism is using the geological elements, not only geological elements, but also non-geological resources, but also the educational tourism should be carried out with fun. We call it edutainment. Edutainment means education and entertainment, but how can edutainment be achieved? Geotourism, geotourism with edutainment can be achieved with very effective interpretation panels, very, if very capable, qualified interpretation guides, and very good displays at visitor centers. I'm going to talk about interpretation 10 panels today. Also to promote geotourism, we need to overcome mass tourism. There are so many people in some Asian countries and it's very difficult to carry out this uh, geotourism. So we have to make people curious, we have to make people interested and we have to make people understand. There are three types of tourism, guided tour, group tour and self-guided tour. And different educational programs should be developed for each type. The guided tour system is the, the most effective way for educational tourism, 
and we can use local residents uh, as guides. And the people, I mean, because if uh, tourists should spend more time at the tourist site, they may stay uh, longer and overnight. But there are some problems. There's sometimes educational tourism is not possible if there are too many tourists. And we need to train guys and the, the guys should be very qualified. The group tour or mass tour is the most serious problem in some Asian countries. Uh, in Korea, a group of 300, 400 students make an educational trip together for education. And so uh, decreasing uh, number of students may be necessary for geo tourism. So we have to develop uh, various ways, the audio video systems that we have to educate teachers before uh, they take a tour. And uh, so we need to think about how to overcome this uh, mass tourism. For self-guided tour, they, have, uh, they are free to select their tour site, but it's very difficult for them to achieve satisfactory education. And they tend to go the most most scenic places. You know, not, they don't want to get educated. They want to enjoy at the at the uh, uh, beautiful site. So, what is entertainment? It means educate and entertain simultaneously, and it is commonly used in environmental education, and mainly to introduce scientific issues to children. For edu entertainment, what they should do. They have to experience a lot of things by finding, discovering, testing, measuring, weighing, seeing, moving, cutting, listening, inventing, etc. So they have to experience. Now I'm going to uh, talk about interpretation panels. And uh, there are general, some general rules for interpretation panels, I suggest. <coughs> Do not show what you intend to show or what you want to show, but only show what visitors want to know. For example, this is one geosite in Ulung Island of the Korean National Geopark. And look at the site. Otto Brescia is formed contemporary, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares about Otto Brescia. The, another general rule for interpretation panels is the information too much in a single pattern? Too much, of, too much amount of information in the form of text or graphical design is probably one of the most problematic issues. This is not definitely not a good and efficient way of delivering intended messages to tourists. Some I learned that somebody called the theory of KISS means keep it simple, silly, or keep it simple, stupid. So don't make it complicated. Another thing is there, I call it three seconds rule. Visitor will decide whether to read or not within seconds when they see the sign. If they are not happy with the contents, it may be too difficult, too complicated or too much, they would not read and go away. For example, this is the sign in one of the World Heritage signs in China, too complicated, too many signs, nothing interesting. But here is the one sign, one part of the sign at Working Eiffel Geopark in Germany. And they are attracting uh, little people by uh, you uh, draw a uh, showing some very interesting uh, illustrations. Who are the aimed target people to show? There are, there are many categories of visitors and we cannot satisfy them or, 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 or at the same time, all of them at the same time. It is based on geoscience education level at elementary schools. In Korea, in my case, I, wrote, I aim for fourth grade elementary school kids because they, they are the ones who learn to, uh, about the basalt and about the rocks. Before then, they just, you know, uh, rocks are, you know, toys that I throw in, something like that, you know. But, you know, since uh, from the fourth grade, they really uh, seriously learn about the uh, earth sciences. But important note is that you should not make the contents what you know, but contents should be written, what should be learned and considering the educational level of tourists. So for me, 
uh, when I uh, write the contents, I, I usually aim for uh, elementary school kids uh, for the interpretation, interpretation panels. But usually, I prepare a little more advanced contents for high school students or uh, college students and uh, prepare, uh, uh, ask them to prepare as a, as a book, small booklet for them to read. So before setting up any uh, uh, sign boards or interpretation panels, it, we, in, we, need, we need to do the serious planning. I'm going to example, uh, make an example of the Hosei, Hosei Cave in South Korea. Because cave is a long passage and uh, dark, we need to think about the point. Where is the point? Where most effective and most educational and should be duplicated. So uh, we need to select the point and we need to consider the level of interpretation. And because cave is a difficult pathway, we have to uh, consider the condition of tourists, walking condition of the tourists, where they can read the sign but very comfortably. These are the traditional sign boards in most show caves in Korea, Dragon Rock, Galaxy Falls. But when you look at this, uh, this kind of flowstone, what do you see? You, you see the different colors. So this is the signboard uh, interpretation pattern I made. Why do we see many different spirit theme colors? To make people curious and to make people to attract uh, the, the tourists to read. So the contents for interpretation panels, it shouldn't be difficult. If it's too specialized, then the people won't read. Another example in the Ulung Island, the National Geo Park, higher class type. Even geologists, geolo geology, uh, geologists, you know, some geologists may not know this term. So they are, uh, it shouldn't be difficult. Are there enough photos or illustrations in the panel? Visitors may easily relate the content of the panel to features that the panel displays, thus simplified drawings for interpretation contents of the object may be very useful. Like, I mean, there are, there is a narrow passage only on the left-hand side, there is a uh, cave core growing, there's nothing on the right. So this diagram is showing the supply of water from this direction and why we have cave cores only on the left-hand side. Sometimes other additional photos for reference can be also helpful. You can see this kind of uh, growth lines in broken stalagmite, but we added the tree rings for comparison. This is something very similar to trees, you know, is that it's showing the growth patterns. Many Korean uh, showcases just show the uh, signs uh, from the shape of the spirit themes, which is not educational as all, at all. Sometimes it's very difficult to pinpoint, for the tourist to pinpoint where to look at after reading the signboards. Sometimes it's not clear because it's very dark. So here only this part, the cave cores are growing. So in the panel, we, add the, the photos of those and even enlarge it. And this, by reading these signs, people will understand, oh, you know, this is the part I have to look at. Another point, you know, why does water comes out of the stone? And here is we put the arrow of this part. And also sometimes it's good to put the arrow on, on site. How many languages are shown? It's very important to monitor to do monitoring of international visitors. You know how many languages will you will you prepare? Uh, this is the Harlem Park in Jeju Island, and there are four languages: uh, Korean, English, uh, Japanese, and Chinese. Because th those are the the, the tourists uh, the, from international guests. 
they uh, they have uh, throughout the year. Location of interpretation panels are also important. Here are the dinosaur footprint size, and he, there are the footprints and this the upright panel, and you cannot actually see uh, those uh, dinosaur print footprints and the panels at the same time. So do not hide it. Uh, you have to do this way. You know, you can see and then see the object and the signboards at the same time. Sometimes there is a signboard of a tree, and here there's no tree. Tree is actually behind about 20 meters behind the signboard. So you have, it's very difficult. Even there is a sign in the tree and I thought it was the sign of this tree, but the, the, the sign means be careful. So, you know, that has nothing to do with the interpretation. So uh, visitors wouldn't, wouldn't know, you know, where to look at. So in most places, inclined panels can be more user-friendly and the contents can be read more easily while looking at the site to be explained. However, sometimes it's better to use upright panels at the entrance of the area for introduction. For maintenance, it's better to print the contents of the film material. We usually do that in Korea and paste onto common infrastructure. The best material would be stainless steel to prevent from rusting, but it may be too costly in some countries. So the philosophy of signboards in caves is that make tourists curious and make them fun to read and make simple and easy understanding with photos and illustrations. And it should be easy to see the target subject object and the de design should be friendly and the, it, it, it should be made uh, for easy main, maintenance management. Sometimes the signboards can include some of the uh, videos by connecting with this QR course, or this is a augmented reality. Or sometimes it, it will be good uh, to uh, use the VR, but it may be difficult to do that outside. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Wu, for your informative and insightful speech. I am sure that your speech is very helpful to the all participants today. Now, I would be uh, very grateful if you take the floor once again to chair the following session on uh, three case uh, presentations and panel discussion. Professor Wu, floor is yours. Thank you, Ms. Kim. Um, I, uh, I'm very sorry that I had to uh, look at my presentation uh, uh, from far away, you know. I am in, 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 uh, I'm now uh, in, the, uh, the, in Chuncheon city, which is the capital city of the Gangwon province, and, and I'm in a small room. Uh, thank, uh, I'd like to thank you all for uh, joining today's online thematic seminar on management challenges of internationally designated area. I hope that presentation prepared for you today uh, the, by following three speakers and also including mine will inspire your management capacity. And we also uh, welcome you to leave your thoughts or, or questions during the seminar through Q&A tab or the Zoom chat. Uh, I haven't seen uh, any questions uh, for me yet, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to have one or two uh, in a minute. Now, I, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Annette Schmidt Hoffer from the Antel Bush Biosphere Reserve to deliver a case presentation of communication strategy uh, in this uh, biosphere reserve in Switzerland. Dr. Hoffer has been working in biosphere management since uh, the beginning of this biosphere reserve, and she is responsible, among other things, for strategic planning and reporting and for strategic communication. Please give her a warm welcome. Grüet miteinander and hello from the UNESCO Biosphere Entlebuch. I am very pleased 
to present you my biosphere and I thank you very much for this invitation. My name is Annette Schmidt. I'm a geographer and I have been working now for more than 20 years for the biosphere management. I am responsible for strategic planning and reporting and I do also some strategic communication. What can you expect in the next 15 minutes? First, I give you some background information about the region and the UNESCO Biosphere Entlebuch. Afterwards, I will focus on three communication strategies because 15 minutes are, is little time. I have chosen three examples of how we try to communicate about the biosphere reserve. Original products, sustainable tourism, and cultural events. Finally, I will draw some conclusions. On the one hand, I shall highlight the similarities between the strategies, and on the other, I will show the impact of the strategies. That's my program. The UNESCO Biosphere Entlebuch is located in the heart of Switzerland and comprises seven municipalities with about 17,000 inhabitants. The perimeter covers about 400 square kilometers. It is a very typical rural region at the foot of the Alps. In the economic sphere, we still have a strong agriculture and tourism is another important industry. In the social sphere, we count more than 400 associations and clubs, especially dedicated to music. And in an ecological sphere, and just as typical for rural regions, we have many protected areas. So we have 8% core area and 42% buffer area. In the world network of biosphere reserves, we represent a Meyer and Karst landscape. The biosphere is organized as the association of municipalities. We are 13 employees and we have a budget of about 2.1 billion Swiss francs. This is some background information about the Entlebuch region and the biosphere reserve. In the main part that follows, I will present the three communication strategies I mentioned in the introduction. Regional products and their promotion, sustainable tourism offers and their marketing and cultural events. Let's start with the regional products. Regional products are a good way to communicate about the biosphere reserve. We say, that you can taste the region and feel the philosophy. 20 years ago, together with the stakeholders, we started to define the requirements of local products and to label them with the brand of origin, Echt Entlebuch, which means truly Entlebuch. Here, you can see our label. We were among the first to follow this path. Step by step, we increase the variety of the products and the offers so that today we have almost 50, 550 products branded with Echt Entlebuch. Many of these products are agricultural products like milk, cheese, meat, and herbs, or also wood. Both certification and controlling are carried out by an external independent body. And today, lots of these requirements are defined not only at a local level, but also on a national level. The trademark owner was and is the UNESCO Biosphere Entlebuch. Our goal is to have value change that are as long as possible so that we can increase the added value and jobs in the region. But our region is too small for all the products we produce, so we wanted to export them and to sell them outside the region. 
12 producers founded the Biosphere Market Platform. The Biosphere itself has a seat on the board of directors. This founding of the Biosphere Market Platform was a big step for us. Today, it has a turnover of $4.3 million. The market platform is very professional and allows us to supply the large retailers in Switzerland. The second strategy are the sustainable tourism offers and the marketing pool. Sustainable tourism offers allows the guests to get to know the Biosphere Reserve. First of all, we set up these sustainable tourism offers together with the municipalities. Each municipality has positioned itself within the Biosphere Reserve as a discovery hub is a topic. For example, one municipality has chosen the topic of energy, one is positioning itself as a spiritual place of power, and the Mountain Caribou Car Organization brings guests closer to the topic of peatlands, that's our core zone. In order to market this offers jointly, the biggest players in tourism, namely two Mountain Caribou Car Organizations, the two biggest tourism resorts, and the UNESCO Biosphere Entlebuch have set up a marketing pool, a joint tourism marketing team. Today, they do the basic marketing jointly. In summer, for example, there's a brochure Glücksmoment, it means moments of bliss, is published. And in this brochure, all of the region's offers are jointly marketed. In order to promote the Biosphere Reserve, we use also very different communication tools. One, for example, is the magazine My Endly Buch. It's published annually with 80 pages and an edition of about 100,000 copies. All right now, we do a campaign with Switzerland Tourism, that's a national marketing organization about sustainable tourism. We are a key partner. The third strategy are cultural events. One of our beloved projects is the joint ceremonial Alpine cattle descent. It emerged from a research project about on the future of Alpine farming in the UNESCO Biosphere Entlebuch. In a workshop, the Alpine farmers decided to do the cattle descent together and to celebrate the arrival in the valley with a big festival. Around 1,500 guests took part in the first Alpha Fort. Today, we have about 13,000 people. The festival is organized by the Alpine farmers, by the Tourism Association, the municipalities, and many volunteers. The UBE still takes care of the communications. Today, the Alpha Fort became a large and authentic folk festival for locals and guests. To conclude, I will look now to the similarities between the strategies. Three things stand out. Most of the time, we do the communication together with the local actors, such as the markets um, platform, or the marketing pool, or the organizational committee of the Alpha Fort. For the biosphere, it's enormously important that local stakeholders take responsibility and proudly present the biosphere, very much in line with UNESCO's motto, Proud to Share. This actually results in a forced communication strategy, namely that the population should take on an ambassadorial role, as we showed here also in a poster campaign. On this poster, it was written I am Biosphere, ambassador of the most beautiful region. A second similarities are partnerships. Whenever it's possible, we are looking for strategic partners as the national retailer I told you, or the national tourism organization. It's a very good way to increase the impact. 
Here, for example, the CEO of Coop, it's one of the big retailers in Switzerland, and his management crew visit, uh, visited us two months ago. This was great. You can communicate very direct, and especially you know each other personally. Then they know the people behind the products and the products are no longer anonymous. And the third similarity is the brand management. We present the offers and events under the umbrella brand of the Biosphere Ently Booth so that the visibility is significantly higher. Consistent brand management is so another communication strategy. You can see here, that's our, that's our brand. That's the brand of Echt Entlebuch, truly Entlebuch of the local products. But then, but also a, a municipality use it, the cable car organization, or also our gossip partners. What's the impact of all these strategies? We wanted to know it, and so we launched two research projects to determine the added value of the tourism offers as well as the original products. Well, it can be said that the gross value added of the Biosphere summer tourism corresponds to 5.0 million Swiss francs. The gross value added of the Echt Entle Buch product, 5.8 million Swiss franc. If this is converted into jobs, we can say that about 100 jobs are created in the region thanks to the Biosphere Reserve. We actually wanted to repeat the survey every 10 years to show the development of this gross added value. But unfortunately, COVID-19 has stopped our plans. So we will carry out now the survey next year. With these three communication strategies, we hope to lead the biosphere into a sustainable future. To conclude, let's hear how our director summarized the impact of the biosphere. Thank you for, attention, for your attention and your listening. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Smith Hoffer, for your wonderful presentation. And uh, I'm sure that uh, the audience ha uh, may have some questions for you. So uh, we'll have, and the, after the, all the listening to the all the uh, uh, presentations, we'll have some time for discussion. Uh, our next pre case presenter is Dr. Asiel Hilario. Uh, he is the scientific director of the Basque Coast UNESCO Global Geopark in Spain. And he's also a chair of the Commission on Geoheritage in International Union of Geological Sciences. He will uh, share the case of communication strategy in Basque uh, Coast UNESCO Global Geopark. Dr. Hilario is a geologist with a broad international expertise on geoheritage, geoparks, geoconservation, and geotourism. His professional career is especially linked to the Basque, Basque Coast UNESCO Global Geoparks since 2005, and he has participated in many international and national projects. Uh, I was lucky to, uh, to meet him uh, by Zoom uh, several months ago, and he's now in charge of the uh, IGCP project for the Global Geosite uh, uh, program. I'm sure his project will uh, help quite a bit uh, for the for recognize, for recognition of the international significance of some geosite in the future. Dr. Hilario, the floor is yours. Well, hello, um, good morning, good afternoon, good, uh, good evening. Uh, it is a real pleasure for me to be have been invited to be part of this interesting webinar about UNESCO uh, designated uh, territories. And it is a pleasure to try to explain our communication strategy in one of the most 
uh, one of the smallest uh, geoparks of the of, of, of the network. Um, I would say that um, when we are talking about a communication strategy, we first need to know which are the main aims of this territory. In our case, we knew very well that the main aims of the of our territory becoming a UNESCO designated area was to show that we are a very interesting, uh, interesting touristic destination, that we are an innovative destination, and not only that, uh, that we are an innovative and a sustainable destination. So all the messages that you are going to include in your communication strategy must, let's say, reinforce this, uh, this idea. The first thing that makes us different is that we are a UNESCO designated territory, and this is something very important. This is a very important brand that gives us credibility. And it also means that every message in your communication strategy should be based on the main values of UNESCO, which is science, which is education, which is culture. And all that should be included all the time in the messages of your communication strategy. Second thing that makes us different is that further than being just a touristic destination, UNESCO designated territories, UNESCO Global Geoparks, uh, work very actively with the Sustainable Development Goal. And this is something that has to be included very clearly in the communication strategy as well. Probably not as much uh, towards the visitors, but it is very important to talk about Sustainable Development Goals to the, to the local population. I would say that one of the things that make us different is geotourism. UNESCO Global Geoparks are territories that make us understand and connect with our planet Earth, and this is geotourism. And it is very important to communicate that when you are visiting a UNESCO Global Geopark, you will have the possibility to understand that territory from every point. point of view, from the ecological point of view, from the agricultural point of view, from the cultural point of view, you will have the chance to understand the identity of that territory, the real identity of that, of that territory. And this is your tourism. And this is something that really make us, make us different. So every message in your communication strategy should be reinforcing this idea of, of uh, geotourism. UNESCO Global Geoparks are territories to explore. And this is a very important value today in the 21st century. UNESCO Global Territories, uh, UNESCO Global Geoparks, sorry, are territories to admire the beauty. UNESCO Global Geoparks are territories to understand our position on Earth. And this is something very important. We have to understand that we are living in a dynamic planet. We are living in a dynamic planet in which we will have to face very important environmental challenges in the future, like, for example, clim uh, climate change. And UNESCO Global Geoparks are very good territories, very good laboratories to work and to make, let's say, make a proper communication education related to, to this. Okay, so let's land in our, in our geopark. This is the Basque Coast UNESCO Global Geopark. It is one of the smallest geoparks of the, of the network. And as you can see here, it is located in the northern coast of Spain, very close to, to France. It's just 90 square kilometers and it's made by three municipalities. So I think that the first thing that you need to be sure when you are going to define a communication strategy is which are your main geo resources, so which are your main uh, capacities, your main characteristics, what it makes you it makes you different. In our case, I would say that we have a very clear geological phenomenon which is called Flish. We have one of the best and most beautiful books of Earth history that has been ever written in these beautiful cliffs. And that gives us the possibility to talk about key ideas like deep time, to talk about key ideas like deep mass extinction, and to talk about key ideas, very important ideas related to the evolution of climate on, on Earth. Because these cliffs have recorded, for example, one of the most important warming events on Earth history and have recorded one of the most important uh, extinctions on, on Earth history, which is the extinction of, of dinosaurs. So, so it is very important to know what you have in your geopark and how you are going to, let's say, um, use these big ideas uh, to communicate. Another important thing is that we have these layers are full of enigmatic fossils. And these enigmatic fossils give us the possibility to talk about the evolution of life in the deep sea. And this is something very unknown for the most of the people. So it gives you the possibility to talk about very let's say, enigmatic and mysterious small stories that are going to surprise your, your visitors. 
The third main idea is that these cliffs are being eroded. And by being eroded, we can talk about sea level variations. And talking about sea level variations, it's something very, very important when we talk about climate change. We need to understand how, let's say, the coastline have uh, react in front of different sea level changes that happened in the, in, in, in the past. And also, the fourth main idea is that we have very nice caves with prehistoric art. And that gave us the possibility to talk about human evolution. And talking about human evolution gave us the possibility to connect with our ancestors, to know where we come from. And this is something very, very attractive, if you, if you permit me. And the fifth big main idea in our geopark is culture, tradition, identity. We are in the middle of the Basque country. The Basque country is a very highly, uh, it's a territory with a very, let's say, historic and a very strong uh, identity. So all the things that we do here related to the Basque culture are also part, very important part of the heritage of our geopark. So now the thing is how we are going to communicate this fifth, these five big, 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 big ideas. So that's the key of your, of your identity. The first thing that we, you have to do, that's what we did, is you have to distinguish, you have to pay attention to your visitors. You have to distinguish different kinds of visitors. In our case, we have distinguished it clearly two different groups of visitors. The first one is education, related to education. And the second one is related to dissemination. So the first one is a captive public. So we are talking about the schools, universities, teachers. And the thing is that they are obliged to do it. They are obliged to do it. And this is something very, very important. And the second important thing is that the list of subjects that you are going to use are already fixed. So we are talking about formal education. When we talk about dissemination, so not formal education, non-captive public, we are talking mainly about adults. And in this case, we have basically three types of, of visitors. We have type A, which is a general public with really no specific interest about earth sciences. And they are not prepared to make any intellectual effort to read panels or to read uh, books or, or let's say no, not, they are not ready to or not prepared to make any intellectual effort to enjoy their stay in the geopark. And the type B is a general public but with knowledge and interest uh, on, 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 on the subjects related to the, to the geopark. They are ready, they are prepared to make an intellectual effort to enjoy their visit in, in the geopark. And type C are scientists. So as we can see, these three different types of visitors are very different and they have very different necessities. So the thing is that we are, need to be able to create different kinds of materials for each kind of public. And this is something very, very important. Obviously, we need to have good infrastructures like museums or like uh, routes that can be done by, by car, uh, on foot, viewpoints. So different kinds of infrastructures that can be used by the visitors. You need to create different kinds of materials for different kinds of, of public. And this is something that has to be renew it uh, almost almost every year but in our case for us in the basco unesco global geopark the most important things are the guided excursions we are convinced that there is nothing that can replace a good experience in a guided excursion at the end of the day i understand that this geological phenomenon that you are seeing in this picture it's like a piece of art it's like a piece of art that needs to be explained needs to be uh, so you need to open the eyes of the visitors in order to be ready to enjoy the experience of being in front of this beautiful book of, of, uh, of Earth history. So that's why in, in our geopark, we have a program of more than 1,000 guided tours, 1,000 guided uh, excursions along the year. So we are talking about 14 different tours. Uh, mainly for individuals and a small group with a fixed calendar. And that is something very important. It means that if you are planning to come to our geopark, let's say on the 15th of November, and you come to our webpage, so you can book a guided tour on the 15th of, uh, of November. And we ensure that you will have your guided tour on foot, on boat, or however it is. This is something very important in our communication strategy, let's say related to a touristic destination. It means that Whenever you want to come to our geopark, you will have the chance to do a, a guided tour with a very good speech. Then communication is also very important for our children. 
absolutely important for the future of the geopark. We have about 15,000 school children participating in our geo educational activities. So education must have, let's say, uh, its own language and communication strategy related to this kind of, of public. Obviously, we need to be present in every kind of mass media like newspapers, magazines, television, radio. So this is something that just, just for you to understand, we work, we are four people working in the, in the geopark and one of them is uh, entirely uh, dedicated to, to communication. Obviously, you need to have a very good, attractive and easy to understand web page. You need to work very actively in, 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 social, uh, uh, in social media and you need to, I mean, you cannot, you, you cannot uh, pretend to be just, go just by yourself. So you need to be together with tour operators. You need to be in international affairs like a tour or like uh, Berlin and you need to be present, you need to be part of the communication strategy of your regional or national government, like for example, in, in, in this case here. But there are many things that the visitors cannot see. There are many things behind this communication strategy that somehow gives credibility to the message that you are uh, giving in this, in this communication strategy. You need to promote research. You need to promote research in order to be able to get new information from the cliffs in order to be able to get new good stories to tell. You need, it, that's why every year we organize different kinds of scientific activities, meetings, conferences that give credibility to the communication strategy uh, of, of the geopark. We have a very well-defined inventory of geosites. This is something that most of the visitors do not realize, that this inventory gives us the possibility to work in geoconservation. And working in geoconservation gives us the possibility to talk about, uh, let's say, the, the recovering the memory of the Earth. So every geoconservation uh, strategy that we, that, that we are going to do are going to be published in, in, in different newspapers. And just to finish, we have a very powerful network of, of partners, of collaborators. This is something that most of the visitors will not realize. That again, this gives us a lot of credibility with the local people in our communication strategy. Just to finish with this beautiful picture, and just to say that sometimes a beautiful picture, a beautiful photography like this, is much more powerful than any communication strategy that you might imagine. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. So I will be at your disposal whenever you want. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Azir Hilario, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, as I uh, already mentioned, uh, we'll have a discussion time uh, later on. So uh, please get prepared uh, for any questions for you. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce the next uh, uh, speaker, uh, Ms. Song Okju from the Chongsong UNESCO Global Geopark. She's an action officer and a geologist who is in charge of the UNESCO related activities in Chongsong County Office in Republic of Korea. She will share the case of communication strategy in Chongsong UNESCO Global Geopark. Ms. Chu. 안녕하세요. Good afternoon. I'm a geologist working with Chongso UNESCO Global Geopark. Tim is going to be talking to you about the communication initiatives that Chongso Geopark has implemented to facilitate communication with visitors. Before I do, however, let me walk you through the purpose behind UNESCO Global Geoparks. Global Geoparks aim not only to preserve geological heritage, but also utilize this heritage in education and tourism to boost local economic growth. Against this backdrop, Chongsu UNESCO Global Geopark has different education programs, tourism programs, online education programs that we have in place, which is what I'd like to talk to you about today. And towards the end of my presentation, I'm going to briefly touch upon the benefits of accreditation. Chongsu UNESCO Global Geopark is located in the mid-eastern part of South Korea. The entirety of Chongsu was designated as a UNESCO Global Geopark in 2017. 
which means wherever you go within the Cheongsung district, you will be inside the Global Geo Park. Within Cheongsung, there are a total of 24 geological sites recognized for their geological value, educational value, and tourism value. We try to utilize these areas that have geological value in education and tourism by dividing our program into two jurisdictions. One is Mount Zhuangsan or Zhuangsan Mountain Region, which was created as a result of volcanic eruptions during the Mesozoic period. That is why we call this a place created by volcanoes and sculpted by time. The second region is Xinsong Valley, where we can observe sedimentary rocks and remnants of when dinosaurs existed. We wanted to make the most of these geological heritage sites, which is why our programs are largely based on two operative goals. The first is solving local problems. More specifically, we aim to mitigate rural extinction through sustainable usage of tourism resources. Cheongsong Gun struggles with low birth rate, population aging, and rural outmigration. Cheongsong Gun has the sixth highest local extinction risk index among 228 municipalities. That is why we strive to improve the local economy with education and tourism programs backed by the UNESCO brand and instill a sense of pride in Cheongsong Gun to prevent out-migration by providing education programs for local residents. The second operative goal addresses the universal challenges faced by humanity. For example, Cheongsong UNESCO Global Geo Park takes the initiative for climate action. Cheongsong is directly and indirectly affected by global warming brought about by human activities. Cheongsong-gun is known for its apples, but the location of apple orchards continues to move up or northbound due to climate change, which means that 100 or 1,000 years down the road, we may not be able to grow apple trees, uh, we may not be able to grow apples in Cheongsong. Furthermore, the rise in sea surface temperature triggers super typhoons and heavy precipitation that can devastate communities. The damages from extreme weather event continues to rise, and this ties in with global geo parks. There was a landslide in Xinsong Valley, as you can see here in the picture, that was caused by a typhoon, and event and as a result exposed the fossil sites here. We try to educate visitors about climate change and global warming by providing them with this type of information about the past and recurring events of the present, which gets people thinking about what we can do to protect geological heritage sites. Next, allow me to introduce you to our geo-education programs. Our geo-education programs are led by organizations within Cheongsong District and local residents. This is the Youth Geological Expedition Program conducted in partnership with Cheongsong District Youth Training Center. This is one of our major programs. It's a program for middle school students in the area to go on geosite explorations, partake in team challenges, go camping, climbing, and stargazing, and also create videos about how we can protect geological heritage sites. It's an easy and fun way to learn about the culture and geology of Cheongsong, and this program was extremely popular with 89.3% of respondents in the 2020 survey saying that they wanted to be part of the geological expedition program again in the future. We also found a very meaningful comment left by one of the students who participated in this survey. The student said that through this program, I learned that there are 24 geosites in Cheongsong, and I felt proud of living in Cheongsong. We aim to create programs that can instill this type of pride and provide people with information that they did not know about. Next is a program called GeoDream, which is carried out in partnership with the Community Child Center in Cheongsong. It aims to educate 
vulnerable children or children from marginalized families and households about the geological attributes and characteristics of Tongsong and environmental protection as well. These geological and environmental education programs are aimed at raising awareness and instilling pride about the geopark and promoting healthy growth and development. Next is GeoLife, which is carried out in partnership with Cheongsong Geopark Tour Guides. As you can tell from the title of the program, the Geopark residents, tourists and students are encouraged to learn about conser cons conserving and learning about geological heritage sites. Some of the main programs under GeoLife are upcycling activities, using local pro produce to make food at the GeoFood School, and other various geological activities as well. Next is our GeoTourism program, which is divided into self-guided tours and group tours. First, let me tell you about the information we provide for self-guided tours. Because people who come on self-guided tours to Geopark are not accompanied by a tour guide and come by themselves, information boards and social media platforms are important channels through which they can access information. Therefore, we refrain from using technical geological terms and use more illustrations and photographs to make it more interesting and easier to understand for the general public. And we also want to add more meaning. We don't want to stop where people just simply visit the geopark, take pictures, and go back home. So we provide leaflets that encourage tourists to go on treasure hunts of sorts to look for certain geological features. The visitors can then take pictures of the geological features that they successfully find, upload it on our website, and win gifts and prizes. In addition, tourists mostly go to specific tourist attraction sites rather than the geopark itself. So we provide various programs such as make your own eco bag or make your own mask strap, so on and so forth, at these tourist attraction sites. Next, moving on to group tours. Our main program for group tours is called Geo Friends, which we implement in partnership with a tourism agency called Tour Taum. The agency helps gather senior visitors from the metropolitan areas and hires Geopark residents to serve as tour guides. These tour guides take visitors on a tour of the Geopark, but it doesn't end there. Tourists are then taken on a field trip to Cheongsong Geopark partner organizations to try out local food and experiential programs. This contributes to local job creation and boosts local economic activity. The last program I want to introduce you to is our Geopark Tour Guide program. Tour guide explanations catering to different age groups and communities are provided. This graph here shows the number of participants in the tour guide program. In May 2017, as you can see here, Cheongsung was designated as a UNESCO Global Geopark. And as you can see, there was a sharp increase in the number of visitors around this time. This upward trend continued until the COVID-19 pandemic broke out. That is why we introduced online programs that provide non-face-to-face geoeducation programs, and we've also expanded our presence on social media so that they can access more information, get interested, and come to Cheongsong District. One of our online projects is where we partnered with the Korea National Commission for UNESCO. In 2020, under the theme of geotourism in South Korea with UNESCO, KNCU had a program that encouraged the general public and students to participate in geological conservation activities. 
And building on this program, this time around in 2021, the theme was set as Visit Tongsu UNESCO Global Geopark Online. And we are currently in the process of creating an easy to understand a video lecture series about geology, nature, and culture that you can find in Tongsung Geo Park, which will be ended, which will be uploaded by the end of this year on our YouTube channel. The next is a program called Tongsung Geo Park at the convenience of your home, which con which constitutes of experiment videos and online geo education materials using experiment kits. The geological features of Tongsung, as I explained earlier, pertain to volcanic activity, sedimentary rocks, and dinosaur footprints, fossils, so on and so forth. So we help children experience the volcanic eruption that created Tongsung and try out their hand at excavating dinosaur fossils. We put together experiment kits and delivered them to participants who registered for the program and the parents who got these kits were provided with manuals and YouTube links that guided them through how to use this kit with their children and the parents would then upload pictures of their children having fun. So this is a program that not only educates people but also promotes our geo park at the same time so you could kill two birds with one stone. We also distribute short postcard-like news clips to popularize scientific knowledge, promote Tongsung Geo Park, and share experiences. This postcard news are uploaded three times a week to maximize exposure and covers topics ranging from geology, non-geological sites, landscapes, tourism, and past programs. And I'd like to emphasize that we make sure that our content is easy to access and comprehend for everyone by refraining from using technical terms that are difficult to understand and, and explaining geological phenomena by referencing easy to relate to occurrences in daily life. We also capture visitors' interests by posing questions. In the beginning, there were so much that we there was so much that we wanted to share with people that we focused more on text as opposed to pictures or illustrations. But since 2020, we've changed our strategy. We've tweaked it a bit to focus more on pictures and content that make people actually want to visit Tongsung. Our social media traffic on Instagram increased to at least three to tenfold after making this change and the number of visitors to our blog which provides more in-depth information in text format also increased this is the result of the geopark awareness survey carried out by the geopark secretariat after making these changes to our online offering the first question that was posed to visitors was did you know that this place is a geo park? Tongsung ranked quite high both in 2019 and 2020. Jeju and Budungsan also ranked extremely high alongside Tongsung. Now, I'm saying this because this still holds significance that Tongsung ranked high among alongside Jeju and Budungsan. Because despite the small number of visitors to Tongsung, a large proportion of the visitors were aware that the Geo Park was a Geo Park. And, excuse me. Even when the actual population of the area is a lot smaller compared to Jeju or Budungsan, is a testament to the success of our promotion and marketing program success. Since our population is small, uh, we don't have a lot of people here, and we are a small region, but still people knew that Tongsung is a geo park. Last, I'd like to touch upon the benefits of accreditation. According to a big data analysis we carried out on the number of tourists per month, 
and tourism consumption before and after May 2017, when Cheongsong was designated as a geopark, there was a 38.2% and 83% increase in these two indices, respectively, which was a significant increase. And in 2018 and 2019, this growth trend continued. And tourism consumption grew at a more relatively stable pace in Shinsung Valley compared to Zhuangshan Mountain, largely owing to the park that was built in Shinsung Valley, centering around geological features in September of 2019. The Shinsung dinosaur footprint originally offered quite little to visitors aside from dinosaur footprints, but we installed these large dinosaur statues and centers that provide experience-based programs, excavating, so on and so forth. Since then, the post with the hashtag Shinsong Re Dinosaur Footprint on social media increased 89% since we revamped this park. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ju. Uh, now, uh, this is the end of the panel, panel, uh, case presentation. And let me invite you all the presenters to the uh, panel discussion. Uh, before doing that, uh, I think we will uh, uh, see the uh, we will share the screen uh, that uh, that uh, about the replies uh, to the question: What is the main uh, challenge that you face when improving communication with visitors and the general public? Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, I think you asked to uh, express uh, three words in three words. And um, uh, you can take a look at them. And uh, I think that the, among the presenters, I'm not, I'm not involved in the uh, uh, management of the protected area right now. Uh, and the, uh, we have three presenters uh, who are actually involved in the management of uh, global geoparks and uh, a biosphere reserve. Yeah, are there any of you who want to uh, say something about this uh, reply that, you know, uh, uh, what, is the, what is the most uh, uh, keywords you can uh, fear uh, for the management of your uh, protected area? Uh, um, uh, Azeo Hilario, <laughs> do you have any, any, anything to say? Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, just at least from 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 Spain, it's uh, nine in the morning now, so it's a great pleasure to be here with you. Uh, if I would have to um, say just in one word uh, what we try to do with our communication strategy, well, I think this is the main the main topic of of our webinar today: communication strategy. At least mine, I would say that it's. When you are communicating, it's just a matter of provoking. So I would say provocation. So it's, I would say, much more than information or education. It's a, you need to provoke. You need to get something like this. And once you have provoked your public or whatever kind of public it is, um, then you have already lightened the, the interest. So I would say just one word, provocation. Okay, thank you. Uh, Zir. Uh, Dr. Shubit Hoffer, do you have anything to say about this? Um, let me see. I think one of the it, the biosphere has to be no, let's start again. <clears throat> it is extremely important that the local people um, are ambassadors of the biosphere. Because when the tourists came and they speak with the, with the locals here, then they can feel if they, they find the biosphere a good thing or not such a good thing. And so I think it's very important to work with the population, with the locals that they know and they leave the biosphere reserve. Okay, so it's like a public, public awareness of the, of the- Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, Miss Chu. 
Could you comment, please? Yes, I find it very difficult to recruit participants. It's never an easy task. So I really do believe that popularizing or raising awareness about these programs is extremely important. And as Professor Wu said, you can use different materials uh, that are easily accessible, or you can come up with edutainment concepts, for example, to really showcase each of the elements and characteristics that each uh, IDA has to students or visitors. Thank you, Ms. Chu. Um, I was uh, I was asked by uh, uh, Mr. Darren uh, Southcott. Uh, I think he uh, is based in Jeju Island, and he asked me uh, the the, uh, the role of the uh, uh, geopark guide and uh, uh, how what kind of role should they have uh, for geoconservation. Um, I think I, I, it has something to do with this. Um, whenever I, I have a I have a lecture uh, to uh, geopark uh, uh, stakeholders, I or, or usually geopark guys, I always tell them, do not try to push to educate geology to general public. You know they are not interested in geology; they are interest, more interested in movies and action stars. You know, but just try to make them feel that. Geology is very interesting. I think it can, this can be applied to uh, biosphere reserve as well. But you know, people are more in, interested in uh, animals, so you know, uh, in that sense, uh, geology is much more difficult. So uh, I think uh, that's uh, one, uh, one 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 thing that you know we have to uh, sort of communicate with uh, uh, tourists uh, in uh, toward the way they want. You know, they are interested. I think that's that. That's one of the things uh, my talk was based, and uh, I think uh, and there is another uh, question. Uh, I, I'm going to switching into the the next uh, the uh, the discussion uh, session. That um, there was a question uh, that uh, what is the communication strategy for the multiple uh, international designated area? Uh, what is this uh, uh, philosophy? I know that there is a. a um, uh, IUCN report on my uh, is called Midas program for the multiple uh, international designated area. But uh, do any of you uh, uh, have uh, any uh, you know, communication st strategy? I'm not. Sh I, I do not have a good knowledge of. of uh, uh, I know that the Basque uh, uh, Geopark is also biosphere reserve. You know, I know a very good friend from the biosphere reserve there. So uh, Azir, do you have any any Anything to say uh, about this uh, communication strategy in uh, uh, while for the management of the biosphere reserve as well as global geopark? I wish I could, but I'm sorry to say that Basco UNESCO Global Geopark is not a biosphere first. It's oh, just a UNESCO, <laughs> it's, it's it's just a, a UNESCO mm -hmm. Global Geopark. And I think I think that this is an this is an important point because that means that for us. Uh, being a UNESCO Global Geopark, it's the only thing we have. So that's that's our our main topic. That's our main destination. We are a UNESCO Global Geopark. We are nothing else than that. And yeah. that's and that's something very important because somehow it allows you to direct very well your message. So and but I, I would like to say something about the previous question, which I think is a very important one, at least for us, uh, related to the role of the guides. Um, I think the guides uh, have a very, very important responsibility for the good experience of the visitors in, a, in at least in our geopark. Uh, sometimes I usually sometimes I have compared the role of the guides uh, with the role of a good waiter or waitress in a restaurant. So no matter how good is your kitchen, no matter how good located is your restaurant, no matter how much money you spend in your promo promotional strategy, if the waiter is not a good waiter, if the waiter is not a good waitress, uh, if she is not well trained, the experience in the restaurant will be bad. And that's the same for the, for, for the guides in a natural protected area or, or a place like a UNESCO Geopark or Biosphere Reserve. So for us, as I said before, 
we can prepare many different kinds of materials. There is the materials, books, guides, posters, panels, whatever it is. We can be on television, we can be in the radio, we can be everywhere. But there is nothing that you can compare with a good experience of a guided excursion. With a guided excursion, with a local guide that has been trained, not necessarily a geologist, not necessarily a biologist. As you say, I agree, Professor Hu, that they do not have to educate in geology. They have to provoke. That's what I said at the beginning. They have to provoke mm -hmm. interest. They have to say, they have to somehow provoke a kind of click in the minds of the people that it's joining them. So, so for us, it's very, very important. It's crucial. That's why uh, we are offering such a wide um, offer of guided excursions. And every two years, we organize a training course for our guides. In our geopark, which is a very small geopark, but in our geopark, we can have about, I would say, 15 guides working in, in summer period and about half of them working for the full year. So it's a very important thing for us that we ensure that they give the message, they give the speech that we want them to give. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that is very, that's a very good uh, comment. Uh, Dr. Schmidt Hoffer, do you have anything to say about this issue? Yeah, um, I think this is once more this ambassadorial role, and we have programs for these ambassadors. For example, also we make guided tour with, uh, with guides also, but then, for example, with the teachers, <clears throat> we had a program, and so the teachers. 250 teachers in the region, they made their own excursion in groups of fours. So they have to think about the biosphere and they have to deal with the idea. They don't, they can't only consume, they have to do it by their own. So we can, um, so they are able to make it by their own. And I think that's a good thing when you have to deal and to think about the things by your own. Not only the biosphere management, but also you as a teacher, for example. Or okay. every three years, we have um, we take together all the employees of the municipalities and we discuss with them um, the biosphere reserve, the programs that they can do in their life and so on. Mm, okay, um, you know. Uh, I used to work for the uh, Jeju, you know, the uh, uh, to write the domination uh, uh, nomination uh, application document for the Jeju Global Geopark as well as World Heritage Site. And as far as I understand, the philosophy of the Biosphere Reserve and the Global Geopark is more or less the same, you know, conservation and the the, the local uh, uh, local you know social economic development. So I think. Uh, whatever program uh, you have, even the World Heritage Site is, even though it's mainly for conservation, you know, still, you know, it's good to have uh, uh, promoting the uh, local uh, development. So I think uh, even though two, three programs uh, look different, I think they have a basically same philosophy. You know, uh, we have to promote local uh, uh, development through the tourism by uh, conservation. So uh, even though uh, whenever when I read the the, the IUCN document, uh, I, I mean that's uh, that's that's what it says. But you know uh, there are technically very difficult because you know uh, it all, all depends on the government authorities who is in charge of biosphere reserve and who is in charge of global geopark. You know, I mean unless they share the information together, it's very difficult from the lo local level to, to uh, make a policy because, you know, uh, we are dealing with different uh, uh, um, government. You know, I shouldn't say too much because I am a convener, but uh, I'm going to uh, ask you uh, some of the questions uh, uh, I was given. Uh, I, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Ju first uh, in Korean. It's been about four years since Cheongsong was designated as a global geopark. And throughout the years, I know that you all have worked a lot on promotion and marketing, so on and so forth. But Cheongsong is not that well known among people. 
So moving forward, I'm curious what plans you have in terms of promotion and marketing moving forward to strengthen uh, your promotion programs and raise awareness. Well, as you've said, we had tried to strengthen promotional activities and marketing, but it, it, honestly, it, there hasn't been a dramatic difference. We first started online promotion after uh, May of 2017, uh, but we actually started in earnest in 2020. So I think it's not been too long since we've actually started with online promotion. And we've also tried to switch our strategies, as I said before. So we've tried out these changes and they have been effective because a lot more people have contacted us, a lot more schools have been in contact about field trips. So I don't think that we can say there has been no impact. There has been a change in our promotional activities and it has benefited. And especially when the COVID-19 pandemic comes down, I do think that our efforts are going to pay off a lot more. And there are also uh, infrastructure issues as well in terms of transportation because it's harder for people to get to Cheongsong physically. So we're trying to come up with more programs that can, you know, mitigate and resolve this type of issue. Thank you, Ms. Ju. And uh, I have a question to uh, Dr. Schmidt Hoffer. Um, you mentioned that there are seven municipalities involved in uh, your biosphere. And that's, I think, it's a, it's a very, very complicated, you know. Uh, if, if, if it's in Korea, you know, it's very, it's very difficult to deal with seven local government people. And you said uh, uh, there are some local products. Are those products representing a, uh, a local government or the whole global geopark? Also, when you decide uh, the, what, what kind of product you will sell for the geo, uh, biosphere reserve, uh, is there a meeting uh, or committee, committee uh, established for the uh, management of the biosphere reserve to decide, for, to make a decision on what kind of product they're gonna make? Oh, I, I cannot hear you. Excuse me. Um, the first question, um, the products represent the whole biosphere. That's, there are not the municipalities. They are really regional products from the whole biosphere. And the decision which products we produce, well, it's, a, it's different. Um, all people who want to produce products, they can come to us. And so they have to fulfill these criteria and then it's okay. But mm. to make new products, there is the biosphere market and they um, develop new products together with the producers. It's not with us, but it's with the biosphere market. Okay. And they, um, they have a look what the consumer wants, where they can deliver things. And so it's very professional to promote new products. Yes. So you have a, a guideline for them to apply, and then you have a very strict criteria that uh, for the selection. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, they, okay are thank you. they are national criteria at the moment, and so you have to fulfill, and if it's okay, then you get this label, and if you don't fulfill, then you don't get this label. That's true. Okay, okay. But thank we are you. interested in different products, you know. So if someone wants to do that, we have a look that it's, it will mm -hmm. um, work. Not just cookies, you know, some other things as well. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Azir, um, you said uh, you divided uh, visitors into two groups, uh, uh, captive public and non-captive public, and also non-captive non -captive public is uh, uh, classified in three groups. How can you operate the guided tour program uh, in your geopark uh, for different uh, different uh, group of people. Do you have uh, uh, different levels of geotourism program, or uh, it, is, is it is it up to the uh, the sort of uh, quality of the uh, geopark rangers? You know, how do you handle uh, this uh, uh, this matter? Well, as I said before, when when you, when you have to define a communication strategy, it's it's a it's a basic thing to know uh, who is in front of you. And related to our guided uh, excursion program, 
uh, we are offering about 14 different guided excursions, of which I would say that 12, so most of them, are directed to group A, so let's say basic public. Mm -hmm. There are, I would say, two or three that could be directed to public B, so people who is more interested with more information. Uh, obviously, this is something that you cannot you cannot say to the public. You cannot ask someone to, are you type B or are you type uh, type A? So are you a standard public or are you interested public? So you cannot ask, uh, ask, ask this question to the, to the public. But it is something that you have to take into account when you are defining the contents, the speech, the guides, the level of the guides, as you said, the level of the rangers. And when you are uh, somehow promoting this, this guided excursion. So you cannot say this is for general public, this is for public type B, this is for, for public type C. Uh, type C. But mm -hmm. it's something that has to be implied in the let's say organization and management of the of the of the guided excursion so yes uh, every product that we create guided excursions or not uh, it's directed to one kind of of specific uh, public mm. okay thank you uh, uh um i have a question to uh dr uh schmidt hoffer um, you said uh, some of your original products are exported to to other countries, and uh, where is it exported? Are they exported to? And uh, do you have any brand benefits uh, for the products? Uh, in other words, I mean the same same apple that uh, Miss Chu was saying that Chongsong is very famous for apple. I mean. If there are two apples, one from your biosphere reserve and the other from other, your apple is more expensive than than them. Or you know, uh, do you have any? Uh, are you using your uh, brand name uh, for selling your local product? Okay, um, the first question is about export. Um, I have to say the export is outside the region. It's not outside Switzerland. Outside ah, Switzerland, okay. they are testing a little bit in South Germany, a little bit in USA, most of the times um, cheese and herbs, but it's only a testing. Export is outside um, the region. And so we are exporting in the neighboring um, hood of the region of the Biosphere Reserve and also in larger cities in Switzerland. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes. Next. Um, next question is to Miss Chu. You talked about the education programs for residents and students. When you say uh, residents, uh, is it actually the residents who live in Cheongsonggun district, or is it a more larger region like North Gyeongsang province? Or do you think that it needs to be expanded nationwide to make these education programs a bit more accessible and a bit more universal? Yes, the programs that I introduced are aimed at the local residents. We've started these programs and initiated these types of programs and education programs last year. And so we've started smaller scale. So right now the target is local residents. And now we are working on uh, expanding. We're working on plans to expand in the future down the road nationwide these types of programs. The family-based expedition programs, I think, would be quite nice. Thank you. Uh Azir, um, uh, have, I have one more question for you. It's good that I prepare several questions in advance uh, because we do not have many questions from the floor, unfortunately. Um, you said, you, you're, when you mentioned that you have a scientific meeting every year, it's very, very interesting and very, very, uh, I mean, I would encourage Korean Geo Park uh, to have that kind of science meeting every year uh, because, you know, uh, we do not have a regular scientific meeting every year. But uh, I was wondering that the meeting, the participants, are, are they supporting, self-supporting? Are they paying for their trip or uh, do you, your geopark is supporting uh, some program or you know, uh, uh, they prepare some budget, uh, made some budget uh, for the participants? Well, I would say it depends. It depends on the on the on the kind of of meeting. But but yes, of course, the geopark and let's say the local government supporting the geopark, regional government in the in this case, do support economically 
uh, the organization of, of these meetings. For example, we can, or for example, we can have some more local meetings related to the uh, geodiversity strategy of the Basque region, of the Basque government. So they do not have to be always international. They do not have to be always big meetings. But I think it is very good, very valuable to transmit the idea that the geopark uh, is connected to the scientific community in different senses. Mm -hmm. It's connected to the scientific community. And we can ensure, I have written a couple of papers about this issue, we can ensure that transmitting this idea of being connected with the, with the scientific community, it's very, really profitable for the geopark because it gives you credibility. And it, it's going to give you a good window in the mass media. It's going to give you a good bridge with the institutional, let's say, uh, with the institution, with the, with, the, with the politician, local politicians. So it's going to open you very interesting doors. So for us, transmitting this idea of being connected with the scientific community, not only by organizing events every year, but through many other uh, initiatives, it's a basic, it's a basic, I would say, it's a basic pillar of our communication strategy. Maybe they, thank you, Asir. Uh, maybe this is the question I'd like to also ask uh, Dr. Uh, Ernest Smith. You know, uh, in the Biosphere Reserve, do you have any scientific meeting? Also, uh, the, do you have any, uh, uh, what kind of program do you have to, for training you guys? Uh, are you uh, uh, um, asking around the specialists to come over and give a special lecture, or do you, can you handle that uh, within your Biosphere Reserve? Um, we have also science, um, we do also knowledge transfer and we have also scientific um, communication. So in two weeks, for example, also we are not only a biosphere reserve, we are also, also a regional park in Switzerland. And we do the research together with them. And every year they have a research conference and so this conference will be in the UNESCO Biosphere Entley Buch because we have 20 years. We have this jubileum, and so we will have them here. That's, for example, one thing. It's a bigger thing. All about 100 persons will be here. And then we have also little things with experts, five to six. It's quite different. So we have the whole range also. And the second question was, let me know once more. Any any okay. special uh, the, the, for the training guys, you know, are yes. you ask, yeah, asking a, a specialist to come over or, you know, do you handle it by yourself? Um, also both, we have specialists. For example, we have also caves. So we have a cave um, expert, mm. but and we have also um, um, methodological things, didactic things. Then we have also experts. And sometimes we do it also by our own. Or for, exa for example, they um, do it together. Then we have a couple and one makes an excursion and the other say, hey, that's good, that's not so good, but you could, could do better. So it's a peer, mm. it's also peer, peer-to-peer -peer education. Mm. Uh, the, the question for Ms. Chu, uh, the same question. When you train global geopark guides, do you bring in outside experts or do you train them yourselves? Well, the geological areas that I am familiar with, I study upon and then I relay that information. And since the potential tour guides are not geological experts or geologists by any means, I make it easier to understand. I uh, spell it out in more easier to understand terms. I all, and we also talk about communication skills and we also get to know each other to learn about each other strengths and weaknesses and we try to build on the strengths and improve the weaknesses with outside experts thank you uh thank you very much um i think i asked all the all the questions i prepared and I'm, I'm out of questions now and but we still have about uh, five minutes five to seven minutes left and uh i, I i'd like to ask three of you if you have anything to say more uh uh uh, to the to the floor or uh, 
if you, you don't have to if, to, if you don't have any, but you know, uh, there is, uh, if you have anything else that you can, couldn't say, uh, please uh, uh, say, uh, let's uh, uh, start with Dr. Anit Schmidt-Hofer. For me, it's okay for the moment. Okay, Azia, do you have anything else to say more? Oh, I was going to say that I am here because my camera was 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 black <laughs> in, in in the last five minutes, but I have been I haven't here. Um, uh, I, I would like to suggest uh, a very simple idea uh, that that summarizes why it is important to distinguish the kind of people type A, which is let's say normal people, basic people, not really interested in geology, not ready to make any effort. And type B, which is people who already knows that they are coming to a UNESCO Global Geopark, they are interested in geology, they are ready to enjoy the experience uh, by reading and by having an intellectual experience. So I would say that one of the goals of a UNESCO Global Geopark, it's getting that an important part of your A, type A, basic visitors will come back to your geopark in the coming years, in the next years, as a B, type B, visitor so if you get that that means that you've done something right mm. i agree with you you know um uh if if the the tourists uh probably if they want to buy a membership of your geopark or biosphere you know uh, so that they could come come back every year that would be wonderful you know uh, that I mean, if you have a wonderful program, I think that is that is also possible because you know most of most of the, uh, most places, uh, global geoparks or bios bios reserve are, are uh, scenic places. So you know they may, may want to come back. Um, I think I'd like to uh, uh, compile and summarize that you know we had a, a wonderful three speakers that uh, uh, to uh, about the. Uh, how to increase the communication strategy in the uh, uh, internationally designated areas. And I think we have a common sense that, you know, uh, we have to provoke the, the, the tourists and we have to make them interesting and we have to make them curious. And uh, while they are uh, curious and interesting, we have to sell our local products, you know, not just to see cheese, but, you know, a lot of things. Uh, also, uh, the, we have to advertise, promote by using uh, different uh, different skills. And I I, I uh, like the idea of Miss Chu was when they suggested that they are making different kind of program to promote uh, their uh, uh, global geopark. So I think uh, we will uh, finish up. Uh, I think we have still five minutes, but I think it's okay to uh, to uh, finish up. Uh, is that okay? Um, Anybody home? Yes, it's okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, three of you. And uh, I hope to uh, meet you sometime again. Thank you very much, Professor Wu, for uh, chairing the ses session smoothly. And we apologize for any inconvenience caused by unexpected technical issues. I ask, ask for your understanding. And I thank you for all the speakers and panelists and participants who joined today. It was a very fruitful and interesting discussion. And I was impressed with uh, active participation of all the participants. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the end of the second day of the seminar. But please remember, it is not the end of the whole seminar. We have one more day tomorrow. Tomorrow's session will begin at 3 p.m. Seoul time, just like today. The topic will be ecotourism in internationally de designated areas. We strongly and gently encourage you to come back once again for many more insightful presentations and further discussion. Thank you very much and see you tomorrow.